What is going on world? What's up YouTube? It's Zero here. Today I'm bringing you guys a brand new episode of The 8 Below Show. Welcome everyone to 8 Below. Thanks for being here guys to the best entertainment related show here on YouTube. And I'm super excited about our episode here today. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. So let's get into it. We've been talking on the YouTube channel quite a bit about Rage and the Rage franchise as a whole guys. And in this segment of the show, I want to talk about Rage 3 and everything that we know so far about, about this title that is supposed to be upcoming and pretty much already uh, has been announced as, you know, being greenlit at this point. But I want to talk about some of the things that I'm wondering if this is actually a project that's going to happen and if it already has been greenlit, will it get canceled at some time throughout the course of its production? So let's talk about it. So guys, in an article that was written by Nitish Singh of Gamers Suffice, Rage 3 release date and everything that we know about the FPS title. So the Rage franchise started way back in 2011 when ID Software rolled out the first iteration of the first person shooter set on an apocalyptic backdrop. As soon as it came out, critics and gamers drew parallels with games like Fallout 3 and Borderlands. However, it did win a couple of awards for its graphics and gunplay and over the years has earned a fan base as well. And then of course guys we got Rage 2 that came out which was developed or co-developed by Avalanche Studios and even though it's only it's been like a short period of time guys we are already hearing rumors about a possible third installment. So basically Rage 2 shortly after it you know it came out there had been uh, some talks from the studio director at ID Software, that being Tim Willits, guys. He was heard showing interest in a sequel. This has got fans curious and excited at the same time for a new Rage title that might build on the failures of Rage 2 and also help deliver better world building and create a more immersive story. So... During his interview with the reporter, Willits stated how the Rage franchise gave the developers a fun setting where they can try out new ideas and do what they want. However, there has been no mention of an official release date or even a statement on whether they have star development on the game. So, look, what it sounds like is that they want to work on it immediately. Pretty much before Rage 2 even released, guys, they had already been talking about making a third game, which kind of gives you some indication where their heads are at at this point like they they definitely want to continue the story the thing about it though that bothered me w with the statement before rage 2 even released was simple simply that it seems to me at least that they were almost more focused on a continuation that being rage 3 than they were on rage 2 and that might have actually hurt this game in a in a specific way i look at just the game as a whole guys I thought that there was something underneath everything, you know, the bad, bad critical reception and even poor, you know, sales, not really great sales, I should say, um, that kind of led to Rage 2 not really meeting its its expectations and what it really could have done, because I think underneath all of it was something really special, and I think that this is a special franchise, and so Rage 2 at this point, guys, as we've seen it, Seems like there's not a lot to really do in the open world. There's just, It's kind of just a lot of nothingness out there. And so I think that's something that if they do make a Rage 3, they need to really explore creating more of a, more environments that, that there's just more things to do in the open world, especially since there's only a single player story, guys, that kind of gives you, I mean, you want to do some exploration if you have some time to do those things throughout the course of the game. And unfortunately, they're just, you know, being just a single player story that really does hurt this game as a whole, in my opinion, because why are you going to spend $60 on a single player story that doesn't have an extremely immersive story? It doesn't have, you know, uh, the environments and such aren't necessarily like super interesting. Things are just not as interesting as you would would hope or like. And not having multiplayer, not having co-op modes really also holds this game back in my personal opinion because it doesn't bring you back to the game after you beat the campaign. So look, at this point, Rage 3, the release date, they very well might be underway with development. I think though, guys, that there's a possibility that, you know, 
Uh, Bethesda may have pumped the brakes on Rage production simply because of what happened with Rage 2, right? And they're already looking ahead, that being ID Software, looking ahead to making the next iteration of this game, and it feels to me that they might just need to pump the brakes and try to make Rage 2 as good as they possibly can, which I would be fine with, you know, whether that be through DLC, whether that be through just a consistent updates, there's something special here. So if any of the developers over at ID Software are watching this video, I really think that you have something there, but I think that between multiplayer, co-op modes, and just making a more immersive, you know, more immersive environments, more things to do in those, you know, environments and that open world is really going to help in the long run. So uh, with that, guys, uh, what can we expect? So Rage 2 is far from a uh, far more colorful sequel to the gray brown Rage 1. This has been supposedly done to create a distinct environment that separates itself from the Fallout series. The creators have also shown interest in creating something fun and thrilling. We also have rumors about the developers having a serious discussion about introducing giant cockroaches that players can ride. All this does give us an idea of the direction when the next part of the series might be heading. However, as stated earlier, there is still a long time before development on the new game starts, and it might be great if they give some attention to what the gamers have to say. So, the biggest demands are better open world gameplay experience and a more immersive storyline. And look... I totally get it. I totally get, you know, fans of the Rage franchise. They want those things, right? Better open world gameplay experience, more immersive storyline. I get it. For me, it's more having more to do other than that other than that single player experience. Having things like having a multiplayer experience, having co-op modes, very, very important to me personally. Now, as far as Rage 3 goes, guys, when can we expect this game? Well, here's the thing. Obviously... At this point in time, if you look at Bethesda and the landscape of what they're working on, you got Starfield that's going to be coming out. You've got Elder Scrolls 6. Of course, Doom Eternal already came out. So what would be next in, you know, as far as what they're considering? Maybe Quake, maybe something else. It's hard to say. But Rage 3, I still think, is probably a number of years away, simply because of the probably the sales as well as the critical reception of Rage 2. I think they're going to want to pump the brakes on it, give, you know, try to breathe some fresh life into Rage 3, hopefully, that meaning, you know, a single-player story that is very immersive. They also kind of make it... I, I've always found it interesting, guys, and I think it's important that developers make a game not thinking that they're going to make a sequel, thinking that you're going to make this and this is going to be it. This is going to be the only game in this, you know, that you're going to have a chance to make. And you kind of take that approach instead of thinking that you're just going to continue making these games because really, if bad reception comes out from that game or, you know, bad sales, you might be completely left, you know, whole, you know, with your pants down, essentially, and so it's important that you kind of make a game based on, you know, just that one game. Don't look ahead, kind of look in, live in the moment, and if it does really well, which is what you hope for, then you can move on to the next thing. You think about Doom 2016, I mean, you know, that game kind of felt like its own thing, and then Doom Eternal, that comes out. So if you kind of follow a similar trend, there's something special underneath all of the, all of the stuff and all the bad, you know, press and such that Rage 2 has gone up to this point, I think Rage 3 could really be something special. But we're probably going to be looking at, guys, a number of years until this game comes out. So we don't know much, but we just what we do know is that this game is something that the developers are talking about, something that they definitely want to come out at some point or another. But let me know in the comment section below, what do you guys want to see in Rage 3 that could kind of change, you know, the way in which, you know, they kind of, uh, th this series goes in, in a specific direction. I'm hoping that uh, you guys have, you know, similar or you just have different ideas of where you want to see the this story go. And if you want to see multiplayer modes, co-op modes, what is it you guys want to see? Because the, at the end of the day, Bethesda's going to have the final say. And if they want to move on from it and make a new Quake game, make a new Prey game, those are all possibilities. I think Rage has something special underneath all of it, and I hope that they continue it in one way, shape, or form. But let me know what you guys think, and for more Rage 3 content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. One of the most anticipated games, guys, in recent times, I would say, is Elder Scrolls 6. This is a game that people have been really looking forward to, and we've got, you know, obviously we got our first glimpse at the game, but it was a couple of years ago. 
And now the question is, is where is this game? Like, when is this game going to be coming out? Is it going to be anytime soon? Or is it going to be, you know, in the long foreseeable future? So let's talk about it. So guys, obviously Bethesda has, you know, they've been pretty open about, you know, certain aspects of their games. And what I will say about Elder Scrolls is they've been very much so hesitant to really give out any information at this point in time. And it seems like that kind of tells me that it's pretty far off. And it also, they've also confirmed that, you know, Starfield is going to be coming out before Elder Scrolls 6 which basically means uh, that we're probably years away from a Elder Scrolls 6 or from the game actually coming out. So it's hard to understand exactly why they would have shown us, you know, just a, the first image of Elder Scrolls 6, you know, uh, back two years ago and then haven't heard anything about it up to this point or anything further up to this point. So when are we really probably going to see more about Elder Scrolls 6? Well, here's what I'm saying, guys. I think the rest of this year in 2020, we're most likely going to probably hear some some more about Starfield. And then, of course, after Starfield, we'll probably, uh, you know, that'll probably release in 2021, potentially 2020. It's hard to say, but let's just say 2021 Starfield releases um, or maybe even after that. It's hard to say, but let's just say 2021 is most likely when we'll see a Starfield release. And then probably following that, they're obviously going to be starting to ramp up that production at Elder Scrolls 6. And I would say that that'll probably be the next thing coming out after Starfield. Or is it? I mean, because at the end of the day, if you think about it, what about Fallout? Are they going to make another continuation of Fallout after Starfield between that as well as Elder Scrolls? Are they going to make, uh, you know, another Rage game? Are they going to make another Quake game? What are they going to be working on following Starfield, especially if Elder Scrolls 6 is still a ways off, you know, Bethesda isn't one of those companies that really just works on one thing at a time. They're more so kind of greenlighting a number of projects, and then, you know, obviously the, the, they, they come out when they're done. But um, that being said, I would assume that the next thing after Starfield will be Elder Scrolls 6. So let's just say that you start hearing more about Elder Scrolls 6, let's just say next year. I mean, when we say years away, guys, which is what a lot of the developers over at Bethesda are talking about, they're saying that, you know, if you're talking in a couple of years from now, uh, I'll be we would definitely have more information to talk about regarding this game. So that what that tells us is, is that they're probably still years away from even talking about this game. So, Probably 2022, guys, is when we would probably start hearing more about, you know, this game, uh, Elder Scrolls 6. Now, maybe we'll see a couple more images come out, in tw you know, later in 2020 or 2021. Uh, maybe we'll see, a, you know, kind of like another teaser trailer or something, something, you know, very vague, not really telling us much at all about the story and such, and then we'll probably be able to play the game in like 2022 or 2023. So we're probably still a ways away, guys, from really even, number one, hearing information about the game, and number two, actually being able to play it. I mean, the simple fact that we haven't seen anything since that announcement in 2018, that's telling me that we might still be a ways away from it. And look, you can look at other games and other big franchises out there. I mean, you think about Grand Theft Auto, you think about, you know, I mean, there's just a ton of games out there. I think of the, like, The Last of Us or Death Stranding. I mean, these were games, guys, that were announced years upon years ago, and then some of them have finally come out, but it's been years later. I mean, Death Stranding was announced, you know, a long time ago, and then finally it came out, right, uh, years later. And so that's probably just something that's going to happen with Elder Scrolls VI, and it seems like it's happening more and more with these big games. They want to make sure, number one, that everything is done right. They want to make sure that it's, you know, they can almost top what the previous installment of the series was able to do. And so Elder Scrolls 6 guys being very anticipated and everyone very hyped about it. I think that that's putting added pressure on Bethesda to really deliver, especially with what's recently happened with like, you know, Fallout 76 and even Rage 2 and obviously Doom Eternal and other games that they've brought out have, you know, helped kind of lessen the blow. But when Fallout 76 came out, guys, that was really, uh, they got hit really hard with a lot of bad press, a lot of, you know, negative reception 
on just a lot of the, you know, a lot of the controversies around Fallout 76. And so at the end of the day, they're going to want to make sure that they don't do that again with something like Elder Scrolls 6 because that's their other huge juggernaut of a franchise. I mean, think about Bethesda. Their two biggest franchises are pretty much Fallout and Elder Scrolls. And so you really don't want to mess up those. Now, obviously, Doom is starting to, to you know, rise, you know, to the occasion and is doing very, very well. Quake could be, you know, like if it ever really comes back in a major way, it could be something special. And even Rage could be pretty special. And who knows if they would ever bring out Prey 2 or re-green light Prey 2. So, look, at the end of the day, guys, I think Elder Scrolls 6 is still a long ways off. But the one thing, if you're a big Elder Scrolls fan, and all of us are pretty, you know, pretty much fans of this of this franchise, and we want to see it succeed, I think that the one good thing that we can all kind of take from it is that it's coming. Now, the question is, is when, but at the end of the day, we got the announcement, it's being worked on, and it's going to come out at some point or another, guys, uh, in the next, let's just say three to five years, it'll be out. And so I'm hoping, guys, that we're going to have more information soon. But it's going to, we're just going to have to be patient. And that's really what it is, guys. There's other games coming out from so many other developers. And, you know, the gaming landscape is, is a, it's, it's an exciting one because there's new games consistently coming out. And it also leaves us something to look forward to, that being like Elder Scrolls 6. But let me know what you guys want to see in Elder Scrolls 6 the most. Uh, in the comment section below, let me know what you guys want to see. And for more Elder Scrolls 6 content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. It doesn't feel like that long ago when Red Dead Redemption 2 was released to the world, guys, and really took the entire gaming landscape, all of us who got into, you know, are into the Red Dead Redemption series and just love Rockstar games in general, picked up our copy of the game and we, you know, kind of breezed through the campaign or just jumped right into, you know, the other aspects of the game and then Red Dead Online comes and obviously, guys, this was a spectacular game, uh, without a doubt. I think most people really did uh, enjoy Red Dead Redemption 2 overall. Now, some people obviously have complaints about Red Dead Online and, and things of that nature, which is, you know, I mean, obviously with any type of multiplayer mode, you're going to have your complaints about it. But what I want to talk about today is from what happened in Red Dead Redemption 2, we're not going to get into spoilers, by the way, guys, with the story, but... From what we know about how well the sales were for Rockstar and how successful Red Dead Online was, at least, you know, up to this point for them, what does that mean for the future of the Red Dead, you know, uh, franchise as a whole? Will we see a Red Dead Redemption 3? So let's talk about that, guys. I think that from someone playing, you know, played the entire game, even played some Red Dead Online, I got to say, guys, that they've got something going here, like that being Rockstar. And I'm not even just talking from a, the Red Dead, you know, franchise. We look at Grand Theft Auto and what they did with GTA Online and GTA 5 was, you know, it was, I mean, people love GTA 5 um, as a whole. And GTA Online, guys, I mean, they're consistently adding new content to that. They're adding new content to Red Dead. So where does that leave us? We all believe, guys, that GTA 6 is the next game coming out by Rockstar. And then the the report was for a long time was that Bully 2 was going to be the next game coming up for Rockstar. And then that to follow that would be GTA 6. And apparently Bully 2 was in development but got canceled a while back. And so what I'm what I think, guys, is that we're going to see probably GTA 6 get announced next. And then following GTA 6. Uh, you know, you could think to yourself, oh, Red Dead Redemption 3 will be next because it's going to, it's basically the second biggest to Grand Theft Auto as far as the Rockstar IPs are concerned. But I think that there are some games that we're forgetting about, that being like Max Payne. I think Max Payne 4 is definitely something that has been talked about within the communities as well as I think the developers have even been thinking about potentially bringing out a Max Payne 4, maybe an L.A. Noir 2. I definitely think that Red Dead Redemption 3 will come out. Let's just get that right out of the way, guys. After the conclusion of the game, after what we've seen as far as the start of, like, you know, Red Dead Online, you see the same with GTA Online, I think that 
in my opinion, I believe that with Max Payne, they're going to do something similar. They're going to make like a Max Payne online and each game will have uh, like an online aspect to it that they, that they do because obviously the online aspects are really what generates a lot of revenues for these companies. And so I wouldn't be surprised if you saw them kind of go between those three series. Now, LA Noir, you know, Manhunt, uh, all of those other, you know, IPs that Rockstar has, there's a lot of question marks there, even like Bully. It's hard to say whether or not we're going to see continuations of that. But I would say, guys, that we're probably going to see a GTA 6 first. And then we'll probably see Max Payne 4 before we see a Red Dead Redemption 3. And obviously, guys, I'm just excited as everybody else to see GTA 6. And I, I would love to see a Max Payne 4 as well, or even like an L.A. Noir 2. Red Dead Redemption 3 is going to be a while, and I think that's kind of clear. Because of Red Dead Online, they're going to really want to build this thing up, similar to what they did with GTA Online. Surprisingly, though, it sounds like G GTA you know, 6 is going to be the next thing. I, I thought that Bully 2 and then like a Max Payne 4 would make more sense before GTA 6 just because of how big GTA Online is and GTA 5 as a whole is just huge. Splitting up that fan base, you know, to GTA 6, I, I don't know if that's like the smartest move, even though I know everyone would certainly play GTA 6. But it's hard to say. Rockstar, I think, is in a really good position financially when it comes to all these games. I think that they can certainly just take their time with whatever it is that they plan on doing. Red Dead Redemption 3, I believe, is going to come out, guys. Whether we're, What storyline we're going to be following, it's hard to say. They'll probably just continue from where they left off with Red Dead, you know, Redemption 2. Uh, potentially, you know, we'll go in the future a little bit. Maybe we'll go, you know, even further into the past. You know, it's very hard to say, where, you know, what direction they're thinking about going in. At the end of the day, though, I do believe that they are going to have a Red Dead Redemption 3 will come out at some point or another, but I think we might have to wait a while, guys. Um, they're going to certainly want to continue updating Red Dead Online. They're going to be, you know, obviously with GTA 6 and then, you know, potentially Max Payne 4, like L.A. Noir 2. I think that they will be bringing out the, the bringing the Red Dead franchise back just because of how big it is. I mean, it's made them so much money up to this point with especially Red Dead Redemption 2. And so I think now it's it's kind of like what direction they go in next because Bully 2, they didn't like the direction, the creative differences that they had. They decided just to completely cancel it. So I think a lot of it, guys, you just kind of let them do their process. Rockstar takes their time with their games, similar to like Naughty Dog and even Bethesda. They take their time with their games. They want to make the best product uh, as possible. And so we're going to probably have to wait a while. And what do I mean by a while? Probably five to eight years or so until we even hear word about a Red Dead Redemption 3. Unless they decide we're just going to work on GTA and Red Dead from here on now. We're not going to work on L.A. Noir or Max Payne or even Bully, uh, which I think would be a disservice to those other fan bases. But at the end of the day, it's a business, guys, and their two biggest franchises are GTA and Red Dead Redemption, uh, or just Red Dead, um, and it's not even really even close. I mean, Max Payne's probably up there. It's probably, you know, uh, uh, at third place along with, like, L.A. Noir. War, but it's, uh, you know, still, it's kind of one of those things, guys. At the end of the day, they're going to try to go with where they're going to make the most money and what is most financially, like how much, you know, they don't want to spend uh, too much money on some of these other franchises if they're not, not thinking that they're going to make as much money. But it'll be interesting to say the least what they decide to do. Red Dead Redemption 3, though, guys, I don't think it's a matter of if, I think it's a matter of when. But let me know what you guys want to see in Red Dead Redemption 3. Where would you guys like to see the story go? W would you guys want to see a continuation of Red Dead Online, which I think is probably pretty obvious at this point. But what would you guys like to see? Let me know in the comment section below. And for more Red Dead Redemption 3 content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. We've talked on the YouTube channel about the Thief franchise, this being one of the best stealth games, guys, I think ever made. I mean, it's certainly up there with games like Splinter Cell and just, I mean, a great game in a, a fantastic genre. Unfortunately, that genre has slowly dwindled or has been transformed into more action-based RPGs and such. And so I want to talk about Thief 5, guys. This is a game I would love to see a continuation of the, the Thief franchise. And I think it's definitely something that deserves to coexist with other games out there. So let's talk about it. 
Guys, in an article that was written by Cal Jeffrey of TechSpot, this was written a while back, guys, but I want to use it as context. Eidos Montreal says you can forget about a Thief 5. Last week, uh, which of course, guys, was back in 2017, we reported that Straight Up Films might have leaked that a fifth installment of the Thief series was in the works. However, this rumor was blown to smithereens when Eidos Montreal had David Anfonzi sarcastically tweeting... Apparently, we're developing Thief 5 game, so now we have a title. We just have to build a team, a budget, forget it. The rumor arose when SUF updated this page uh, for the upcoming Thief film adaptation. Instead of providing a progress update on the movie, the website described and praised the game series. It called Thief one of the greatest games ever created. It mentioned that a sequel was in production that was in step with the movie. It was unclear whether in step meant it was being produced at the same time or whether it was the storyline that was in step with the film. However, the website has removed the claim of a sequel since uh, on Fonzie's tweet, which is really interesting. I, I don't understand quite why the production company would have said that there was going to be a film adaptation as well as, you know, a Thief 5. It's really, it was really strange that, that this whole thing kind of, how this all unfolded, guys. While Eidos Montreal could be cleverly employing deceptive damage control over a leak that it did not want getting out, it would possibly not be a good idea to hold your breath waiting for it. While David Sweet did elicit a response from supporters of a Thief 5, more people came out to brutally bash Thief 2014. Um... So, upon its release in 2014, Eidos commented that future sequel endeavors would entirely depend on how Thief was received. Since the response to the, the game was mediocre at best, a Thief 5 was unlikely from the beginning. The Twitter jabs might have only reinforced that stance. So, look, guys, here, here's what I'll say about it. At this point, where is Thief 5? Well, it's probably in an indefinite hiatus or a limbo state at this point. Maybe it is being developed behind closed doors and we just haven't heard anything the only thing about it, though, guys, is that this was back in 2017, that these, you know, the Twitter jabs and all of that coming out, and Eidos Montreal is probably thinking to themselves, you know what, we don't need to make another Thief game, it seems like people don't don't really want stealth games, which I think is n untrue, I, I just think that people didn't really like Thief 2014, uh, which is really unfortunate, but at the end of the day, guys, it really comes down to the fan base. What does the fan base want? Does the fan base want to see another Thief game? Which I certainly do. I want to see the stealth genre come back in a major way. That being like Thief 5, a Splinter Cell 7, a, an Assassin's Creed title that isn't an action RPG. What it started with was a stealth RPG that then evolved to being action RPG. And we could talk all day about that, but I just really think that the stealth genre, there's still something there. A lot of the gaming industry, guys, is cyclical. You know, things like get go in style and they go out of style just as quick as they came. came. And I think that, you know, things can obviously go back up. Thief 2014 didn't do very well. So it's one game can hurt a franchise, but there can always be a continuation to really help that, that, that you know, get that franchise on the right track once again. And I think Thief 5 could certainly do that. Um, but obviously we don't know exactly the financials. We don't know how well Thief, you know, Thief 2014 sold for Eidos Montreal. But at the end of the day, it seems to me guys that this is probably in an indefinite hiatus or a limbo state at this point, which is really unfortunate because I believe that Thief 5 should come out at some point or another. Don't hold your breath, but at the same time, if we as a community want something, that being like a Thief 5, we have to voice our opinion and voice that we want those things to the developers. That's one of the biggest and most important things that we can do, guys, as a fan base. And a lot of times, you know, the developers, you may not think that they're listening, but they're listening a lot more than what you might think. So kind of voicing your opinion, guys, and trying to, you know, get something uh, brought back from the grave, essentially, is very important in the continuation of some of these franchises that we've grown to love uh, very much. And so, with The 5 do I think it's going to come out? I think that it will, guys, at some point or another, if it's not already in development. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to, you know, the money situation. How much did money, how many copies did they sell of Thief 2014? And if Eidos Montreal believes that it's worth making a sequel and does the fan base really want that, which I think that people 
are bashing Thief 2014, but that doesn't mean that they wouldn't be up for a new Thief game at some point or another in the future. But let me know, guys. Would you guys want to see a Thief 5? And what is it that you guys would want to see change from Thief 2014 to now? Let me know in the comment section below. And for more Thief 5 content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. And with that being said, everyone, I hope you guys did enjoy this episode of The 8 Below Show. And if you guys did, leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, stay positive. And as always, I'll talk to you guys all in the next one. Peace.